So let's jump in and take a look. Does it just work, Todd? Ah, oh, 16 times the detail. Is our first new universe in over 25 years. Does actually look really but good. Still a Bethesda RPG through and through, where you step into a new world and you get that feeling of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds. Because the choice of where to go, it's not ours, it's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. It does look very pretty. From the rocks at your feet, to the mountains in the distance, to the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. We realistically Good. simulate the galaxy around you. Our next generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination. That'd be crazy. To light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all-new animation system. And of course, you can play it in third person. And you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game, given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources. I'm just thinking of the mods right now. It's going to be insane. You can stumble upon something unexpected. And people start chucking EMBs on this thing. Oh! Space punk. Yeah, he killed that space punk. My space P90. Interesting that you can see their levels. Usually can't. Oh, well, that's horrific. We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. And you can view all that in your data menu. This Changing that UI. For everything you're doing, from your skills to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail in every object. From all of your weapons to spacesuits. Trying to quickly read all this. Just obsess over the details and food. We obsess over food. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's head out. They did that again? Good. As they should. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and- Sucks, you snuck CBBE in there. That's where the visual interest is. Obviously the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style, and then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch. A bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used. It looks like the first Alien movie. Alrighty. That's what's reminding plan, me of. Captain. This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. 
This uses your ship's grab drive to fold space and jump to these systems. There's going to be a mod where you type in the name of planet you want because the most distant ones. But for now, we're going to get lost on this UI. Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. Atlantis didn't sink. It's on another planet. your eyes are guided upwards. Your frame rate kind of goes down. Vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think. So many NPCs. Coffee. Finally. It's also, where your adventure with Constellation begins. Exactly. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Hello, I'm an alien. If you could place it on the table here. Oh my god. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of <laughs> Is it? You know, Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege and Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Former space, space cowboy. They resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here value law, discipline and the legacy of humanity they consider themselves the true children of earth you ever think of joining up with the vanguard help the united colonies even get your uc citizenship new atlantis isn't the only city within the united colonies the city of sidonia on mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the united colonies see stuff like that the really united reminds united me of alien which is a you good thing. You might find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Route Inn is an Aquila City fixture. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. A deal. Neon started out as a fishing platform, but is now known throughout the settled systems as a pleasure city where almost anything goes. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Reunion is hiring the 
Alright, can I kill that guy and take a suit? I wanna wear that blob suit. Has been chewed up and ground up by neon. Try not to get yourself killed, alright? Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore. But these areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. Snakes. Serpent hungers. All humans shall be made dust in time. Tunnel snakes rule. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think... The galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, you ready to get out there? Throughout the galaxy, there are so many things to see and stories to experience. I'm already sold on how it looks. I need to, like, yeah, this is what I need to know. The roleplay stuff. Hours in character creation. And I think people are going to be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. I want to see, like, just talking in dialogue. was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities. And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all of the characters and NPCs you're going to see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. Hey, come on, come on. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. This is New Vegas' you know opening. New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? Not the name I would have chose. You start that's your name, that's your name. As though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets, and that'll be your starting point. Your journey from there can be as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also the simplest Faces still look a bit... Eh, but it's fine. ...as close as possible to make whatever they want. With it's a lot better, but... <coughs> Not better than their previous games. Makeup, blemishes, scars, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot, but I think it's the most fun to use. Yeah. Character creation is Don't more smile. than just how you look. This is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Backgrounds give you a bit of backstory and start you out with three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. Goodbye, enjoy, well, thanks for stopping by. You never know when yours is going to come in handy. You could be in the middle of a fancy restaurant, talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. There we go. I, I probably <coughs> stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. Dialogue choices on your background, that's what I wanted. Further ...by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional. And they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your I can choose fan. introvert in game as well. Is it really, really oh my god. He'll join your crew and I give you gifts. Can't believe they just showed that. Up with this constant commentary. I can't believe He's I actually can called a during fan. Breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit. There's going to be mods to kill him. Oh my god. I came across some hostile zealots in space, but because I had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them, I was able to get by without any issues. Oh, good. That's the stuff I want. There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. Ah, oh, see, look at that stuff. That's the stuff I want. Do that too. What a view! It's a feast for the eyes. Off we go to another adventure. We'll let you discover that on your own.
Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. That's our whiteboard. We need to write notes on our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, Whoa. You get a skill point. Land octopus. Which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill. Challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher I like, ranks. I prefer this. Like, you can't just level up by exploring and stuff. You have to actually interact with the tech tree or what, you know. If you want to get better at, better at hacking, you've got to actually hack. Makes sense. Boost pack. Out of the gate. I'm boost packing everywhere. I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. One punch! That one's a lot of fun. Predator vision. Suit your play style. I'm very much a stealth player. So, I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. My favorite part about being stealthy. Yep, it's just the same Fallout stuff. Slowly Good. creeping through vents like you're in a movie. And then jumping out and springing on people. Oh, they have like vents now and stuff. Whenever possible. Not I just like a linear dungeon. Situations. This area's off limits. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing a death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We studied data from NASA and the realism the should still be fun to help us make the world feel if, you know. believable. From the way we approached planetary atmospheres to the way we placed biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, you'll be navigating asteroid fields, having chance meetings with interesting strangers, dogfighting in space, and exploring derelict ships. Oh, definitely. Can you blow up planets, though? It's all out there. Ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity. Because whether it's on the surface of a planet, the alleys of a city... Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Of space, ...you never know what you'll find. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. Oh, terraforming. Terraforming. That's probably gonna, that would destroy the engine, I'd imagine. Like, Every it'd be so jank. A ship technician where you can purchase I like this stuff. And modify ships. Anything I can help you with? The, the shipbuilding stuff makes sense. It's good. It's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now, though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. Yeah, see, like, and you have this is great. If you that. if you want to be a miner, you, you can, can quickly upgrade individual build this big mining vessel that can carry 
crates or you can deep dive crates everywhere builder mode here what you I can want. change anything from the systems to the look and layout adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew adding cow it just can works your ship's overall silhouette an improved grab drive allows for longer distance space jumps you can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. Yes, I can get my ice cream pink. Build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, your ship can look like almost anything you want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like animals. The HMS Platypus, as I called it. Sure, I see it. Had a, like a giant tail to it. Then we've done. <laughs> oh my god, that thing. We've done mechs. So it's really. Oh, well, okay. Whatever you... your imagination is. Right. While you can build your home among the stars the way you want to, you're probably not the only. I wasn't expecting it to be that. Home. Like, free. Sure. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. The engine's ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. These companions can serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your yeah. ships and outposts. <coughs> Good. As well as unique quest lines. Companions are unique. Some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be NSFW modders are rubbing their hands right now. This rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts, and their unique skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him just gotta learn to embrace them more. And give him a little personality. It is a shame. Part of life. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using the ship building tools and crew selection features in Starfield, you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, can I eject people out the airlock? I need to know that. of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything and that is really cool for us as developers space flight should be exciting <coughs> and dangerous and you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way oh no that means we're all gonna die we've extended that sense of control to ship combat it's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons it's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Powering up the ground drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You can jump into light speed while aiming at a planet. You should always I guess it's like another dimension thing? You're not alone out there. Like Star Wars hyperspace? A 
unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. Oh, need that. Done. Yeah. Will a holdo maneuver. <laughs> After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can you steal their bodies. That engages you into scrap. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Cool. That's really cool. Can you do that with like every ship? Once you've taken yeah, what's the creation the ship, club like though? It's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. Add it to your fleet. But space is way more than fighting for your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship, like the UC Vigilance. <laughs> There's so many ships in spaceports and stuff like that. I'm curious how many, like, quests are in them. Like, does every big ship have a bunch of quests in them, or what? So you don't want them to feel, like, lifeless. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them, you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero. Um, but I want to That's the new cheese wedges. Storing all the all the cheese in your house. Some strangers might be That's a great transition. Human connection in the darkness of space. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. Grandma. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is Ooh, so that's cool. Here. It's like a it's vault. Encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests. And it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers. Breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. That'd be great. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder. I mean, there's the, like, light connections between Fallout and Elder Scrolls that's already been made. So they could try. And just setting you free. Everybody, we've shown you so much stuff. We oh, thought we'd collector's just edition. Take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much. It's the watch that was leaked years ago. And we love you. Yeah, this is. I'm pretty sure this is like the end of the conference. Unless there's a. In every one of our games, oh? we always put so much care into oh, all the details all right. that breathe Still going. into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. I thought they were about to announce online. To experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Beautiful. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what's it's cool about this whole system that we we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself 
comes as the player explore. This is what I wanted from Mass Effect 1 when you scan planets and land on them. Stitch together block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, or and plants to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that Bethesda is known for. I can't imagine many graphics mods are going to be needed for once. That isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friend were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. Hmm. I thought they were wrapping this thing up. They're still going. All right. I mean, at this point, I, I just know everything, I feel. Oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's just not his day. Even in the far future, they still use double bow shotguns. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and Some planets, it well. you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural That's a to the environment. Straight up Star Wars. We didn't want alien uh, monsters. Uh, we alien. wanted native wildlife. Something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. She types so. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. How does this game run? I need to know. What's the performance like? They delayed it for like a year. I'm a big fan of the just big open areas of nothingness. That's that's what I come to space for. I know it's not for everyone. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm worried Habitat about. Habitat modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on-foot building or you can now use a top-down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine-tune things much easier. Wonder if you can go to Earth. The, the solar system. Each plant's gonna take a while to, to load. Gonna be a lot of popping. Oh yeah, Sh we got Mars. Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. That was just a, a Fallout sound effect. Playstyle: different weapon sites and scopes, larger magazines, a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive rounds. Ah. Oh god, the frame rate. I saw that dip there. But good. Different different ammo types. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. 
I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's. I just want to build a nice little house. Sort of air on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic. Oh, did you see that fluid. ice thing? Well, thank you very much, cowboy. It just feels thank great. you for the follow. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than I want to say any other game we've done before. There's a lot of variety. Like Kizak, you've missed a lot. This, they've showed a bunch before all this. This game's huge. Yeah, that's my playstyle. <laughs> Sit back of a silent sniper. Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Feel like you're flying, you are. Sneak archer in space, yeah, pretty much. Funny enough, I don't play sneak archer though. Weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other huh. hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. Ah, oh, that's cool. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns, <sighs> it's hard to tell. Something bigger. At least they're not trying to put this out on uh, um, old gen. Starfield's got you covered. I want to see more fights against big monsters, or like creepy aliens on ships. The combat does look very good. Like that. He just hit it with his gun. Oh, that's a, that's just a terrible way to go being frozen and <laughs> as you watch him point a gun at you. Oh. Alright. Game was loading in next to the area. Ugh. They're like the loader bots from Borderlands. Dragonborn. Today. We are just so Interesting. That you Got Bioshock powers. And spent it here. I know there was probably a lot to take in. There's a lot to the game, even more than we could show here. You know. It looks really good. It looks so good. It looks so good. It looks great. It looks exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. The, uh, you missed it, but all the roleplay stuff they showed earlier, mm, looks great, like the dialogue stuff. Oh, I can get a skin pack. Oh, story expansion, hold up. Did... Shattered Space, first story expansion, interesting. Alright. This is their, like, sizzle reel, yeah. It looks so good! It looks so good, um, because I I I've always been a, a a Fallout Fallout boy, not Fallout boy. I'm not Fallout boy. I I like Fallout, and so uh, it's just like Fallout in space. And I always have like space is my favorite setting, just Star Wars and all that jazz. And so it's perfect, perfect for me. I'm gonna spend so much time on it. I'm gonna do so many mods. Um. So many mods. I mean, people, modders have entire planets to work. So, yeah. It's just a given. I mean... Yeah, you know. Is what it is. 
Um, I'd be annoyed about them talking about DLC if the game didn't seem to have much, but it seems to have plenty. Um, and they're not talking about paid mods or anything concerning. Um, no, it looks great. It looks so good. And modding seems going to be crazy. I don't, don't know what I'm going to do with my channel with Starfield. I probably won't do a full play from release because I'll just want to be playing it on my own. Main thing is just how does it run? Does it break when you load it up or does it actually work? Who knows?